Hello everyone, welcome back to another Love 2D tutorial. So in the previous tutorial, we implemented some basic collision detection with the lasers, as you can see. However, the player can still go perfectly <laughs> through them, the asteroids, without any problem. So we should maybe change that so the player can also be destroyed once they touch the asteroid. Now we're not going to implement quite everything just yet. We're going to implement the basics of destroying the player. But a lot of the things that we're going to also implement will come later along with different parts of this tutorial. So things will maybe be coded out for the future sake, whilst other things will just be left for later. But yeah, so to give an example of what we'll be doing, we go here, we fly, Boom, there we go. So first, let's open up the globals. I want to add another item here. So destroy ast for asteroid. Now you could put this inside of the asteroids object and I would, I would encourage you to do if you want to. However, this global object will make it a lot easier to manage this in the future since we will be doing using this destroy asteroid in multiple files. Cool. Next up, we can open up the player. And it will be a lot like our laser course with collision, but this will just be for the player. So a lot of the things will stay the same, but just a bit modified for the player. For example, local explode therefore explode duration and that would be free so this is how long in seconds in the scenario three seconds then we can go here and we can say explode time so how long it has been exploding for so we'll make that zero exploding so if it's currently exploding we can make that false and unlike with the lasers, we don't need a third item in exploding. It can just be either it's exploding or it's not exploding. We don't need a third one. Since in usually what will happen is if it has finished exploding, unlike with the laser where it just disappears and you know you can just shoot another laser, here if the player has exploded, then once the explosion finishes, we'll start a new game. Or not a new game, but just we'll put a player back and we'll respawn the player basically. And we'll do that in a future tutorial. Cool. Now, first thing we can do is we can close this, we can close this, and we can draw the player exploding. So, right here before the thrusting, because we don't want to thrust or move or things like that if the player is exploding. So, we can say if not self dot exploding so if it's not currently exploding then we want to do all of this and here we can just say l we can just end for now it's fine and we can indent this so if the player is not currently busy exploding allow the player to thrust forward and to move around and whatnot however if the player is exploding, then do something else. So draw something else. And this will be very similar to our laser, what we have drawn here. So this right here. So we can actually copy that. It will just be modified a bit. And we can paste it here. So first, we want the largest circle to be just pure red, just to give it more intensity because the ship itself is much larger and much more complex than a laser. So we want the ship's explosion to also look like it means more because it does mean more than the laser. The laser explosion disappears faster and it doesn't, it only has like two colors and it's very small. Here we want it to be rather large and to have more than two colors to show, hey, this is some big thing that exploded here. This can stay the same. However, this time we can use self.radius instead because we now have a 
radius to work with instead of just a dot. Same here, we can say self dot radius and then just times one, or we can remove it and it doesn't have to say times one at all. Then here, we can say 158 to give it a nice little color here. And then if we were to copy this, paste it here, and in here we can say 234. This will be the smallest one and it will be 0 0.5. So you can see how they scale in size now that we use times. And now you'll understand why we use times to help it scale without us having to do much. And this is how it will look once it explodes. We'll take a look on how that looks in a second. Currently, let's actually just allow the player to explode. So let's go to the move player section. I'm just going to hide this draw. Then the move player section, this whole part here, we can just say, if not self dot exploding, so if the player is not currently exploding, then we can do everything and then paste that in there. And we can just indent and there we go. So if the player is exploding, now we can set if the player is exploding by going self dot exploding is equal to self dot explode explode time could, could you please auto complete there we go if that is more than zero so this will return true or false so if the explode time is more than zero then the player is exploding cool so this will only execute if it's not exploding however take note that we don't want to actually stop the lasers so this whole section here for the lasers we can move that to underneath the end of this if statement. So this, this one right here, it does not hold the lasers. The lasers can still move and stuff. If the player explodes, the player explodes, but the lasers are not affected by it. We can then save. And then finally, we can implement an explode function. So as a function takes in self, and now we can just say self dot explode time is equal to math dot seal. We can then specify explode duration times love love dot timer dot get FPS. There we go. So this will explode the player for us. We can then go here to globals, not globals, my bad. We can then go here to the main file. And here where we have an update, we can go to when it's running. So right here when it's running, then we have our move player first. Then we do our asteroid stuff. Then here in the asteroid stuff, we can go if not, if so the player is not exploding. So player dot exploding. So if the player is not exploding, we can copy this line of code for the laser like that. We can paste it here. And this will allow us to check if the player has collided. However, we don't need this for loop. So we can just remove that, unindent. We have a calculate distance, but this time instead of the laser, it's the player. So the player X, player Y, and then player explode. And in here, we also want to go, and then instead of saying asteroid destroy, we want to say asteroid or destroy asteroid is equal to true. And this is in our globals file, destroy asteroid. If this is true, we want to destroy the asteroid. However, we don't need to set that here. We're only setting it here if the player specifically explodes into an asteroid. And you will understand more about why I did this in the future or why we are doing this. Then here we can say else. So if the player is exploding, then player.explode time is equal to player.explode. Oh gosh, I can't type. Player.explode time minus one so it will decrease if the player is exploding 
Then after this for loop, we can go if. So if we want to destroy the asteroid, then you want to set destroy asteroid to false again because we're destroying the asteroid. And then we can go asteroid colon destroy. And we can just actually copy this whole asteroid destroy thing because it's the same code. Now, one reason why we are doing this right here and not this here as well is because here there are multiple lasers that's going to try and destroy the asteroid. So if two lasers collide with this with different asteroids at the same time, we're going to have a problem because what is it going to do? Destroy asteroids is true. So what if you understand what I mean here? Because if two lasers collide against two separate asteroids, but destroy asteroid is true, it's just going to be incredibly confusing. Anyhow, then there we have our asked index and we have our game. And then here we can move the asteroids. Now let's run the game and see if we explode. Boom. And yep, the rest of the asteroids are moving. However, if we go and we fly against an asteroid, we can still see our player. We don't want that. We don't want to see our player. So we should go here to player and we should make sure we got the if else statements correctly. So if not exploding, then it everything is just held in. I mean, this is for the moving. It's not for the drawing. Okay, let's go to draw. Now, let's see here. If not exploding, then we can do everything in here. However, if the ship has exploded, then let's see here what's happening. All right, I see. So here we already have a bunch of things, but this is only for the thruster. We need to include everything as well. I kind of missed all of this. So let's just go like this and we can just cut and we can go here and we can just say paste. So now we'll not only just not draw the thrusters, but we'll not draw anything else while we are exploding. So if we go like this and now if we were to try and hit an asteroid, we can't see our player anymore. And there we go. We've implemented collision detection for the player. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next Asteroids tutorial.